If you're a craft beer lover like me, then you know there are tons of new breweries opening up around the world each and every year. Not only have these breweries revitalized local economies by creating tons of jobs and great beers, but they have also revitalized many cityscapes by taking old industrial spaces that were no longer in use and transforming them into terrific tap rooms and beautiful breweries. And just like every great beer recipe has a story, so too do many of the buildings that have been transformed into temples of beer. Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and today we're going to be taking a look at five breweries that have been built up inside historic places. These breweries take brewing tradition to a whole new level, as many of them have restored great spaces, and I'm not just talking about old warehouses either. Let's dive into them. Our first brewery specializes in the artisanal world of French and Belgian farmhouse style ales, and their brewing space matches this tradition. Brewery Vivant in Grand Rapids, Michigan created a pub reminiscent of a Belgian brewing monastery, but this space is not the home of monks. Rather, it was the chapel of a funeral home, and the brewing space is actually where the home kept their horses and carriages for the funeral processions. The brewery also restored all the light fixtures in the chapel to really drive home that old world European feel. On their website they have a ton of great photos of the old chapel and the new spaces they've created within it. It's really cool to see the transformative photos side by side. The next brewery on our list opened just a year ago, but they have some of the most unique features I've ever seen in a brewery. The building that houses City Lights Brewing Co. was constructed in 1902 as part of the Milwaukee Gas Light Company Coal Glassification Plant. This plant originally provided all of the coal gas needed to keep the city of Milwaukee alight, but today it's more focused on keeping Milwaukee's nightlife alive. And while it might not have all of its old industrial components, this space still boasts a 20-ton industrial crane that the brewers even helped use to set up some of their brewing equipment. Customers in the taproom also have a great view of the production facilities where they can watch the beers being brewed. The brewery also has a great location on the Menominee River, and a dock has been planned to give boaters on Lake Michigan an easy place to pull in and grab a couple of beers. From one old industry that doesn't exist anymore to another, our next brewery has taken refuge in the former stables of a beer distributor. Argus Brewery has opened in the Pullman community of South Chicago. When built in the 1880s, Pullman was one of the nation's first planned industrial communities. It was home to the Pullman Palace Car Company workers who manufactured luxurious railway cars. Considered a utopian community, it had some strict rules for its inhabitants. For instance, it was illegal to drink beer out of the bucket on sidewalks. The Argus Brewery in the former Joseph E. Schlitz distribution stables, where the beer was distributed by horse lawn dragons and sold in lard lined buckets. The lard sealed bucket insulated the beer and kept the foam down in transit. Although the taproom space is small, it definitely retains that old working class bar feel inside, which is actually pretty unique in the craft beer scene. Heading south down to Georgia, we move next to Jailhouse Brewing, and I think it's fairly obvious what's unique about this one given the name. The building the brewery now occupies was originally built in the early 1900s and was used as the town of Hampton's city jail, fire station, and municipal works building. We weren't aware of its history when we bought the building, says co-owner Glenn Golden. We were happy to learn of its past and immediately connected it to our brand. I love the building's curb appeal and the idea of making it into a brewery. I guess it was fate that it was just an old jail, he said. People come from all over the country to visit the old lockup. This is an independently owned and operated brewery, and it was one of the first packaging breweries in Georgia to begin with. In addition, Jailhouse Brewing Company claims there is a ghost, Old John, living throughout the building. He's said to be a friendly spirit, although he may have spent a night or two in the jail for public drinking. From a jailhouse, we move to another former government building, but this one is considerably more elegant. 
Our final brewery, Willimantic Brewing, is based in a magnificent granite and limestone building that used to be the town's post office when it was built in 1909. Willow Brew is the only pub in town, and actually it's the second oldest in Connecticut. It provided an introduction to craft beer in the area and now boasts more than 40 taps with 10 dedicated to house brews and a wide assortment of experimental brews and guest taps. One of the coolest things about this brewery is all the original woodwork it has still been kept behind the bar. It really gives you that historic feel that they're going for. So there you go beer nerds, five breweries located in historic places. What's the coolest brewery or bar you've been to? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, hit that like button, or the dislike button if that's more your style. I guess it's all good to me. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you next week with even more great beer content.